This is the hybrid transmission of the newest, latest generation Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid system. This is our, hey, how are you doing? Nice to meet you, man. Yes, nice so we're here in South Australia on Mitsubishi. Thank you, my good friends, Russell, Kayla, and Duncan, who kindly invite me to review everything related to the latest generation Mitsubishi plug-in hybrid. Now, watch this. Dave, how are you doing? I'm oh, great, mate. Okay, hey. talk about Mitsubishi plug-in hybrid. Yeah. How does it work? Okay. Show me. This is our front transaxle off of our ZM Outlander. We have the uh, petrol engine that is connected to this pulley here. Wait a minute. Plug-in hybrid with 2.4 litres, you know, super powerful and efficient. The transaxle, the petrol engine is bolted up to the back here. We have a... Quickly before you continue, this these two gears, which these are fixed gears, yes, right? Fixed so these gears. two fixed gears is internal combustion engine, right? Yes, joined onto this uh, pulley here, which is... What is this thing here? Our, Generator. So our front generator is connected to that. It's a standalone generator. Um, however, we do use that as our starter motor. So we're going to see that motor in just a bit. Yeah. All right. So we energize the generator to become a uh, motor, so that we can actually start the petrol engine. Once the petrol engine is, is running, we then turn the engine around. Petrol engine turns yeah. around and causes the generation of uh, electricity. Okay. Uh, up here we have the connection to our front drive motor. So when our front drive motor spins, the, the drive electric motor, right? We uh, obviously turn around these pulleys. Hold on, let me see if this one moves, the vehicle moves. That's correct. If we move this one here, the uh, drive wheel here is turning the front wheels around. If you can realize this is the final, right? this is what we call the differential, right? We also have the ability that at high speed on our vehicles, we can actually engage a clutch down here. Oh, yeah, yeah, hold up. You, you're mentioning a clutch. Yes. All right, excellent. What is this the, the purpose so of this clutch? This clutch is to actually allow the petrol engine to now drive the wheels directly. So we can actually have pure electric drive, um, but we can also have electric combined with petrol power. In, in general condition, this vehicle only drives in electric mode, right? So yes, normally this vehicle is uh, default in electric vehicle mode. How about um, that? All right. And then you have... A clutch assembly, a, it's a simple clutch assembly that engages and then connects the internal combustion engine to the final drive. That's correct. Yeah, so it's, uh, well, it's pretty much direct drive. So uh, Correct, straight is, drive yeah, at a single yeah, speed gear that's, ratio. That's right, so it's 7 to 1 um, engine uh, motor speed. 7 to 1, wheels, all right, okay. Uh, but uh, the engine itself actually is pretty close to 1 to 1 ratio. So probably the only, uh, because I see this extremely simple, the only, what we say maybe, Complex is just the clutch assembly. Yeah. Show me quickly who activates this. Okay. So right. That's just. Behind Dave, you're doing a great job. Thanks a lot, over mate. Here. No worries. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. So what do we so have here? Just over here, we have a hydraulic assembly. So. Uh -huh. uh, is, is this a single on and off? Yeah. Uh, solenoid, right? It, it is just a simple on and off solenoid. So there's a pump in there. Uh, pump is driven by pump. the uh, the wheel. So whenever the wheels are rotating, the pump is driven. Right. Generates hydraulic fluid pressure in there. We turn on the solenoid. Solenoid turns on puts high pressure uh, fluid, forcing the clutch plates on that assembly over there. The clutch plates join together and that allows the drive to transmit between the uh, petrol engine to the wheels. Everybody that knows me has forever know that I'm not the biggest fan with clutch assembly because Jose is an anti-clutch. If you have a hybrid system that only operates this clutch, or engage or disengage, disengage only at cruising speed, meaning that the use of the, or the, use of the clutch is actually minimal. Mm -hmm. I think I'm buying one. <laughs> an input and an input for electric motor. Let's let's see the electric motor. What are these, okay. these electric motors? All right, so we've got an example of a, this is the rear. So this is the rear oh, of the motor. Oh, oh. I, for, I forgot to mention, sorry to interrupt. This vehicle is actually a four wheel drive. Yes. So therefore it will use a drive electric motor generator on the rear. All right, let's see, show me. Yep. So yeah, this is our rear motor, uh, 100 kilowatts. Uh, in the ZM Outlander. We have here the generator, which is what uh, mounts over on that transaxle over is, there. Is this the drive motor or the generator? So this is the generator. This is what actually drives the front uh, wheels. Synchronous uh, permanent magnet three phase AC motor. So this one, this input shaft goes... Yep, goes on to that one up. Yep, that's correct. Okay, so that, that one is the yep. drive and this one... And that one there goes... Is the, the generator. generator in, in that one down there. Yep. How about that, huh? Okay, so who controls these units? Okay, so the front motor and generator are controlled with this unit here. This is called a PDU, um, power drive unit. And Hashtag inverter. Yeah, that's exactly right, yep. Yeah. High voltage from the battery, 350 volts in our ZM Outlander goes in. What is the capacity of the battery? Uh, 20 uh, kilowatt hours. 
plug-in hybrid, you don't see that every day, a plug-in hybrid with 20 kilowatt hours. So it's a vehicle capable to give you over 70, 80 kilometers. Yeah, yeah, about, about 80 k's. Uh, in an SUV, yeah. right? Okay. Power comes in from the battery, high voltage, 350 volts. It gets distributed in here, has three phase AC, and goes out to the motor and comes back in from the generator. Correct me if I'm wrong, is this an interlock? Once it is you open interlock, it? that's correct. That's, okay. uh, once that plate is removed, the interlock is severed and we have a connection here for our uh, high voltage AC air conditioning. Every single hybrid and electric cars are milled for safety. This is open, the vehicle is never gonna start. That's it, yep. All right, yes. the junction box, and this one is pretty particular. What do we have here? So these are the main contactors okay. for the vehicle. So we have a, a pre-charging contactor, a positive contactor and a negative contactor. It's very interesting. You have all the contactors in one single unit. The precharge yeah. resistor, and That's this correct. is the, the whole effect current sensor, right? That's correct, yep. Now, the Mitsubishi Outlander has been forever one of the most reliable vehicles in the market, but the plug-in hybrid Outlander, I think they're taking it to the next level. This is the plug-in hybrid electric vehicle Exceed Mitsubishi Outlander. What's the main features of this car? 20 kilowatt hour battery, 100 kilowatt rear motor, 70 kilowatt uh, front motor, plenty of power, uh, really, really quick actually. A lot of range, about 80 k's you can get on average, um, uh, just on EV, pure EV mode. You can get up to about 800 kilometers of uh, driving range. Maybe Dave, I come. appreciate yeah. You're able to charge the vehicle yeah. externally. Yeah. How does that work? Well, uh, ultimately, it's, uh, it's actually the best of both worlds, really. We uh, have a, a charge port, so we have a, an AC charging port here. And then over here we have our uh, ah, but uh, you have a combined DC. charging system here. Yeah. Okay, so you have the DC charger and the regular level two charger. That's right. Uh, yeah, the beauty of a, a plug-in hybrid vehicle is that you can drive the vehicle as an EV, so you can do up to eighty kilometres uh, on pure EV range. And then if you require to go further, or if you can't get to a charger, the petrol engine cuts in, and then you get your extended uh, range that you'd expect out of a a, a normal internal combustion engine vehicle. Uh, official uh, servicing schedule is every fifteen thousand or twelve months. Fifteen thousand yeah. once a year. Mm -hmm. So breaking the myth about make doing the maintenance of plug-in hybrid and electric vehicles, and ah, you need to spend a bunch of money on this type of vehicle. Huh? What do you say? Yeah, no, that's right. No, they're uh, very efficient and uh, very cost uh, efficient and fr very uh, friendly. I am buying one, period. And now you see the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid. It is now, from now on, one of my favorite hybrid electric vehicles, especially everybody. If you follow my channel, you guys know that plug-in hybrid is one of my favorites. But this vehicle, for me, it's killing it. Dave, thank you so much. No worries, all right. Thank you so much for my good friend from Mitsubishi here in South Australia, Adelaide Russell. How are you guys doing? Let me introduce you. This is the guy that makes this interview possible. What would you recommend with the user that has that beauty? Really cycle the battery. Don't just charge it every day. If you use it uh, for say 10, 15 Ks, don't feel like you've then got to charge it straight away. Um, cycle the battery down, let it discharge, then recharge it, you know, just, and use it, you know, use it for as a hybrid as well as a plug-in hybrid. Would you recommend the Mitsubishi plug-in hybrid as a daily vehicle to go to school or is it a vehicle made to travel or if it works pretty well for both purposes? You can do everything with this vehicle, you know, it's got a combined range of somewhere in the region of about 800 kilometers. It's brilliant for the school runs and that type of thing, just put it in its EV mode, run backwards and forwards. If you want to go on an extended journey, you can drive when the electric batteries discharge, it will just keep running in, pay, in hybrid mode and it will just keep you going forever. So there's none of that range anxiety that people with EVs can certainly have. You can just keep on driving. There's another vehicle besides the, 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 the plug-in hybrid Outlander, which is this one. What vehicle is this? So this is the Eclipse Cross. This uses the same engine. Right. It's got a smaller battery inside, so it's got a 14.7 kilowatt but realistically, very similar technology as to the ZM, because if it's not broken, don't fix it, really. <laughs> yeah, correct. So you're keeping the technology that's been working so far so good with this uh, type of vehicle, right? Yeah, as the ballpark for it, but there's obviously enhancements which can be made to anything. So those enhancements have been made in the ZM, but all in all, just because of the bigger battery, there's needs to be a little bit more technology, different size motors and that type of thing. But all in all, it's exactly the same technology between the two. This guy following my channel since a long time ago, so I, I really appreciate it, Mike. It's a pleasure. Uh, Welcome to Adelaide. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So between, you, you, you know that I'm a kind of a polar bear, you know, the big guy. Which one do you recommend for me the most? The Eclipse Cross or the 
Oh, or the Outlander. For you, the Outlander. Be, for on, sure. be honest. For You're sure. a mechanic forever. The Outlander, for sure. Yes. I will listen to you. I'm buying my Outlander. But even though I want to I wanna check the Eclipse Cross plug in hybrid. So, what type of transmission this one uses? Well, it's this the same. It uses the same transmission. Okay. Paddles here. Okay. So, you can go and change B mode up or down. So, if you're descending down a hill, you can control your speed, and B oh. mode obviously gives you a greater charging rate as well. With the most reliable transmission technology, I just saw it. They just showed me exactly how it works. I am ridiculously satisfied with the Mitsubishi plug in hybrid. I'll be here in Australia. This is home now. I'll be sharing more information with you. So, if you want to learn more, stick around for more this. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Don't forget to subscribe.